Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and it's time for Patron Week, the monthly tradition where I cover archetypes voted on by said patrons. And I'm ecstatic to cover today's topic. Sylvans were one of my go-to decks before the Duelist Alliance era, packing some big monsters, powerful effects, and a game state that was always interesting, thanks to the excavate mechanic they helped to introduce. The top card of your deck is always relevant in Sylvans, and considering one of the decks I gravitated towards after Duelist Alliance dropped was Burning Abyss, a deck with smaller monsters but still maintained powerful effects, and had a game state that was always interesting thanks to the top card of your deck always being relevant because of what Dante might mill, you can see the kinds of mechanics I get drawn in by. And on top of everything else, Sylvans can lean back on a wealth of plant support that had been introduced in the Synchro era, which are ironically almost more effective when used in an Xyz deck. Its competitive relevance was short-lived, gaining a substantial boost from Soul Charging 3 Lone Fire Blossoms, and thus tanked when it was no longer a playable combo line, but it's still one of the most fun decks you can pilot, so today, I'm gonna walk you through how they work. We'll take a walk down the scenic paths of Mount Sylvania, consult our logs to see how these fighting flora respond to battle stimuli, then see what specimens we can graft onto them to enhance their faculties. It's time to get your cheers ready, because we're about to root for Sylvans. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and what better way to travel down the road than on your Duel Runner? We'll be covering iconic 5D's characters along the way, and our next stop is 20k, where we'll start the You Say Explained series, covering Stardust, junk, and whatever other cards we can play to help us rev it up. We've also got our Discord, where on top of talking about card games, we also have time to talk about the molecular structure of DNA! And a Twitter, where you can stay up to date on channel news and my bad takes. And if you really like what I do here, please consider joining my YouTube membership. It's basically like a Twitch sub, emotes included, or backing me on Patreon, where you can vote on a video that I make every month. It also gets you early access to my videos via the patron-only section of my Discord, provided I get the video done ahead of schedule. And whether you're a member or a patron, I get a schedule sent to you on the first week of the month, so you know what to expect for the next four weeks. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Sylvans? Well, they're a series of plant-type monsters of varying attributes and levels, and share two different kinds of effects. The first is one that excavates a certain number of cards depending on the effect, sending all plant monsters revealed to the grave while putting the rest of them on the bottom of your deck, something I'm going to call mulching to save time, and an effect that triggers when sent to the grave during an excavation effect, something I'll refer to as the monster being mulched. But we should actually get on the same page here on what excavating actually is. If you've played the game since at least Secret Slayers, then you'll recognize excavating as the most flavorful mechanic Yu-Gi-Oh has to date, but is otherwise a mechanic that crops up very infrequently. Essentially, when you excavate, you reveal a certain number of cards off the top of your deck, determined by the effect, do something with one or more of those revealed cards, then any remaining cards are sent somewhere, also per the effect. However, the cards are always treated as having been in the deck during this time, a clarification that was desperately needed back before we eroded Pot of Duality. Let's start with the main deck monsters. Sylvan Cherub Sprout is a level 1 light monster with 100 attack and defense. When special summoned, you can mulch 1 or 2 cards, and if Cherub Sprout is mulched, you can special summon 1 level 1 plant monster from your deck, surprisingly not excluding itself as a target. This card is definitely better at being mulched than doing any mulching, and while you no longer have access to the powerhouse that is Glow Up Bloom, you still have a number of different options to choose from. Copy Plant is extraordinary for Xyz plays, summon Ruddy Rose Witch to set up some sweet Rose Dragon plays, or get Rick a Petal to pivot into that archetype. And let's not forget all the level 1 Sun Seeds. And on top of being a powerful extender, is just cute as a button. Aren't they just the cutest little angel? Sylvan Peas Keeper is a level 1 Wind Monster with 400 attack and 100 defense, and if normal or special summoned, you can mulch one card, and if Peas Keeper is mulched, you can target a level 4 or lower plant in your grave and special summon it. Now, there are a ton of incredibly powerful targets for this effect. I'm talking Trap Tricks Dianea, I'm talking Aramage Jasmine, and yes, I'm talking Jerry. Beans Man. But the biggest bean of them all is Lone Fire Blossom. 
revive them, and you'll have access to any plant left in your deck to help keep the peas. Sylvan Princess Sprout is a level 1 light monster with 100 attack and defense, and they work a little differently than the rest of their contemporaries. While on the field, you can tribute them to mulch one card and send it to the grave whether it's a plant monster or not. Then you can place a Sprout monster from your grave on top of your deck, which can include itself, effectively setting them up to be mulched. And if Princess Sprout is mulched, you can declare a level between 1 and 8, special summon Princess Sprout from your grave, and it becomes the declared level. So you can either set up Cherub Sprout to summon any of the aforementioned level 1 plants, or set up Princess Sprout to make the perfect Xyz material to pair with anything, as it doesn't impart any kind of restriction on what you can make with it, opening up a variety of options. Call this game plan the Princess Bride because I'm married to it. Sylvan Snap Drasinagon is a level 1 dark monster with 900 attack and 400 defense, and if sent from the hand or field to the grave, you can mulch one. And if they are mulched, they mulch a card off the top of your deck. So if you're looking to just excavate as much as possible, this little knife gremlin has you covered. Especially because it lacks any kind of once per turn clause, so you could conceivably chain a whole bunch of Snapdrasinagons together, thinning your deck so you can really cut to the chase. Sylvan Coma Shroomo is a level 2 fire monster with 100 attack and 2000 defense, and when flipped face up, you can choose a number between 1 and 5, then mulch that many cards. And if Coma Shroomo is mulched, you can target a spell or trap on the field and destroy it. This has got to be one of my favorite cards in terms of mulching, but I gotta admit I run it entirely on personal preference. With no in-engine flip support, Coma Shroomo is difficult to trigger when you need it. Which is a huge shame, since calling 5 lets you look at over a 7th of your deck, accounting for minimum deck size after opening hands have been drawn. But since we have a number of tools to set up the top of our deck, they still have utility as a one of MST, and a way for your deck to go off out of nowhere during simplified game states, which makes them a pretty fun guy. Sylvan Marsh Martial Leaf is a level 3 water monster with 1500 attack and 1200 defense, and when normal summoned, you can mulch either one or two cards. And if Martial Leaf is mulched, you can target a monster on the field and destroy it. Just a really solid member of the team, as they're good both in the hand and off the top of your deck, helping to jumpstart your plays or remove problematic obstacles respectively, forcing those monsters to make like a tree and get out of here. Sylvan Miko Orange is a level 3 water monster with 400 attack and 1100 defense, and when destroyed by an opponent's card and sent to the grave, you can mulch the top card of your deck, and if they are mulched, all plant monsters you currently control gain 300 attack and defense. Now, this boost is permanent, so it works very well with bosses you want to keep on the field, but when was the last time 300 points made much of a difference? This does put some of our bigger creatures over the 3000 threshold, which can be significant, but the vast majority of your cards aren't going to see much benefit. It doesn't really line up with the rest of your game plan, so like its namesake, it has very little rhyme or reason. Sylvan Blade Fender is a level 4 earth monster with 1900 attack and 700 defense, and when they destroy a monster by battle and send it to the grave, you can mulch the top card of your deck, and if Blade Fender is mulched, you can add them to your hand. So you've got a very decent normal summon in the design family of, when this card destroys a monster by battle, you get a thing. Unfortunately, this does beg the comparison with Shura the Blue Flame. While I'm not here to suggest that Shura is some kind of modern masterpiece of today's meta, it does give you a specific pool of useful cards as long as they're in the deck. On the other hand, what Bladefender gets you is largely random, with no guarantee of a return on investment, and is only slightly stronger. Not my cup of tea, especially because they keep coming to locals with those weird bamboo sword decks. Sylvan Flower Knight is a level 4 earth monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, and when normal summoned, you can mulch the top card of your deck, and if they are mulched, you can take a Sylvan card from your deck and place it on top of your deck. While it has more attack than Martial Leaf, I still think I prefer the Little Shrub, as it has twice the range. However, its mulched effect is pretty neat. It sets up a Sylvan card, not just monsters, so you can either set up your next mulch, or put a Speller Trap on top of your deck for your next draw, which is pretty stellar since we have some bonkers ones. And and hey, who better to have a stellar effect than a knight? Sylvan Lotus Swain is a level 5 water monster with 2300 attack and 1100 defense, and once per turn you can mulch a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of cards your opponent controls, and if mulched, you can take up to 5 Sylvan cards in your grave and place them on the bottom of your deck in any order. You don't get a draw, but since it can recycle cards, you can put back some of your integral spells and traps, or just get more monsters to set up more mulch effects. This can be, single-handedly, one of the most powerful mulching effects you have access to, but its level 
unfortunately makes it rather difficult to make use of. Were it, say, just one level smaller, it would easily eclipse Martial Leaf in usage. And while it's still available for special summons, it just doesn't stack up to other cards we can access with those kinds of effects. While you shouldn't be looking much for guarantees in a Sylvan deck, for what it can get you, you would have to sink a lot of resources into it. Sylvan Guardi Oak is a level 6 Earth monster with 2400 attack and 1500 defense. So close to being Monarch stats. Once per turn, you can choose a number between 1 and 3 and mulch those many cards from the top of your deck. And if they're mulched, you can target any other plant monster in your grave and place it on top of your deck. So if it's an on theme plant, you can set up another mulch effect, and if it's off theme, you're ready to grab it off your next draw. So not only can you get back the likes of Lone Fire Blossom for more powerful summons, Guardi Oak is one of the few mulching effects you have access to that you can just activate without needing some kind of trigger, which again, would be super useful if not for its restrictive level, seriously truncating its usage. Sylvan Sage Koya is a level 7 wind monster with 2600 attack and 2100 defense, and when a Sylvan monster is sent to the grave except during the damage step, you can special summon them from your hand. Once per turn, you can mulch the top card of your deck, and if Sage Koya is mulched, you can add a Sylvan spell or trap from your grave to your hand. Speaking from experience, you do want to be playing a fair amount of these cards. Speaking from experience, you do want to be playing a fair amount of this card, as the free summon is more important now than it's ever been. But get ready to be disappointed when you mulch this in the early game and you haven't gotten to Sylvan Charity yet. You know, just a bit of sage advice for you. Sylvan Hermitry is a level 8 fire monster with 2700 attack and 1800 defense, and once per turn, you can mulch the top card of your deck, and if you do send a plant to the grave because of it, you get to draw a card. And if they are mulched, you get to look at up to the top 3 cards of your deck and rearrange them as you see fit. This is our last main deck monster, and it is a doozy. A favorite summon for me off of Lone Fire Blossom, the lack of a hard once per turn claw here means you can use that effect for as many times as you can summon different hermit trees, meaning you can potentially mill a plant, gain their effect, and draw a card for your troubles. And even mulching it isn't that bad, because now you've set it up for revival effects, and you can set up what you mulch, allowing you to float good effects to the top, setting up cards you want to draw underneath, and if any of them end up being cards you don't want to see in your hand, you can purposefully set them up to get mulched so they go to the bottom of your deck, where you won't have to see them ever again, which is a uh, Pretty appropriate for a hermit, as it turns out. Now it's time for our extra deck monsters, and they're all Xyz. Sylvan Princess Sprite is a rank 1 light monster with 1800 attack and 100 defense, using any two level 1 monsters as material. You can detach a material to excavate the top card of your deck, add it to your hand if it's a spell or a trap, and send it to the grave if it's anything else. So while it's not technically mulching, it will trigger the mulched effects of your Sylvans. You can also have them send a plant from your hand or face-up field to the grave, then target a Sylvan monster in your grave and special summon it. So if you run a deck where all your monsters are plants, then Princess Sprite is always going to get you something special. And with all the effects that can stack Sylvan cards on top of your deck, you'll have access to any on-theme card you can ask for. Combine that with its ability to essentially turn any Sylvan into World Carrot Weight Champion, and you've got yourself a cherry powerful card. Aurea, the Sylvan High Arbiter, is a rank 7 dark monster with 2800 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two level 7 monsters. Once per turn, they can send a plant monster from your hand or face-up field to the grave to look at a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the level of the sent monster, then place them back on top of your deck in any order. Also, once per turn, you can detach a material to mulch up to 3 cards from the top of your deck, then return cards on the field to their owner's hands up to the number of plant monsters that you mulched, minimum 1. This makes them kind of like like a proto-risen Dragite. Both involve excavating to bounce cards, and while Dragite has the higher ceiling, Aurea can set things up with little outside help. And since they don't target, any protection short of being unaffected is useless against this regal avian of the woods, feather they like it or not. I'll say the Sylvan High Arbiter is a rank 8 light monster with 2300 attack and 3200 defense, requiring any two level 8 monsters. Once per turn, you can declare any card name, excavate the top card of your deck, and if it's the declared card, you can add it to your hand, otherwise it's sent to the grave. Also, if a card is sent from your deck to the grave, you can detach a material, then target a card on the field, and place it on either the top or the bottom of their owner's deck. So while the removal effect is limited, being tied to the number of materials all say has, the excavate effect is not. As long as you know the top card of your deck, you get a free draw. And yeah, this isn't likely to happen a lot of the time, but you can always just call it just in case. Get it right? Draw a card. 
get it wrong, and you get to see what it's like to play Darkest Diabolos for a bit. And let's not forget you can just purposefully call it wrong to get the mulch, though you do always run the risk of hitting a spell or trap and sending it to the grave without getting to use it. There's quite a few cards you can use to help stack your deck to help resolve the draw, but for now, that's all I'll say. Okay, time for our spells and traps, and I've been waiting for this all video. Sylvan Charity is a normal spell that has you drawing three cards, then if you have a Sylvan card in your hand, you reveal two cards in your hand, at least one of which being a Sylvan, and place them on the top of your deck in any order. Otherwise, you have to reveal your entire hand, then place it on top of your deck in any order. So while you're not getting the sweet discard outlet of Graceful Charity, you're getting something even better for the theme. Ensuring your top decks. With Charity in your opening hand, you're effectively playing with the top eight or nine cards of your deck, depending on if you go first or second, and as long as you don't have to shuffle to set up your plays, you can ensure you have a plant monster on top of your deck to trigger their effects. So it's kind of like discarding, just in a way that benefits Sylvans. And you don't have to pay anything for it, so it really is a charity case. Mount Sylvania is a field spell that allows you to send a plant from your hand or face-up field to the grave to choose any Sylvan card in your deck and place it on top of your deck. Also, during your opponent's end phase, you mulch the top card of your deck. The key difference here is that, if it's not a plant, you can choose to keep it on top of your deck instead of being forced to put it on the bottom, so it's always to your benefit. Now, while the second effect is a nice bonus, it's too slow to be of much use in the long run. But being able to determine the top card of your deck means you can play smaller amounts of your utility sylvans and just mulch them whenever you need to. Between this and sylvan charity, you can essentially remove chance from the equation, which gives you some level of consistency without taking away the fun. If you get to a point where you don't have the resources to set up the top of your deck, you can still check your top deck for something that'll get you out of that situation, which is the height of excitement. Sylvan Blessing is a normal trap that has you placing a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck, and if you do, special summon a Sylvan monster from your hand or grave. It's unaffected by other cards' effects that turn, and you place it on either the top or the bottom of your deck during the end phase. So you could use it to summon something like Hermitry, stacking something you want mulched, activate Hermitry's effect, get the draw, trigger the mulch effect, and then fold the Hermitry into an Xyz or Link monster before it has to go away. If this was a spell, I have no doubt it would see oodles of play. But in terms of actual playability, especially since there are very few things you can do with Sylvans on your opponent's turn, being a trap card isn't much of a blessing. Our last card is Sylvan Waterslide, a continuous trap that mulches the top card of your deck every time your opponent declares a direct attack, as well as replacing your normal draw with a mulch, though if it's not a plant, it just gets added to your hand, so it's still kinda like drawing. Uh, this one just doesn't do it for me. You could get lucky and mulch a Marshall Leaf in response to a direct attack to stop it, but most every other effect is going to be some kind of setup that won't save you. Even if this was a continuous spell, I'd still have a hard time recommending it, especially with the blatant safety violations going on here. Look at this boat. They're going on a River Rapids ride, and that thing doesn't have a single seatbelt. Think of the Peacekeepers! Okay, so that's all the Sylvan cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we're not playing Control, we lack any meaningful kind of interaction, but as a plant deck, we have a slew of ways to get big monsters with big levels onto the board so we can either go wide with Hermitries, dealing a lot of damage and drawing a lot of cards, or consolidating them into a rank 8, or rank 7 if you've got a bunch of Sage Koyas, toolbox to solve the many problems your opponent will throw at you. But what can we play to help them out? Well, ever since the good old days of Sylvans, that toolbox has gotten a lot more impressive. Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand and Big Eye were the biggest staples you could play, but now we have Dingirsu as a way to insulate your field and remove just about anything, Rika Queen Teardrop for quick effect removal in the form of tributing, or just OTKing with Draglubian. But if you're going first and you're worried about spell cards, then make sure you go into number 38 Hope Harbinger Dino Lightspeed Astro Samurai Storm Shogun Zeo Dragon Titanic Galaxy. And while I would love to add Milia of the trees to this lineup, you know, the Plantic Seas monster that supports plants, we can't really do that in this theme, because both of our level 3s are water, and it needs earth, and I just don't understand why Konami can't just print some good level 3 earth monsters that work in plant decks so we can actually use this. It's like Levier for the theme, and would do so much for the deck, but apparently it's too strong, because why would they not just- Oh wait, Rose Girl is a card now. Never mind, I'm done with this running joke. As for some more generic plant support, we've got Heavy Carrot Weight Champion, a cheap way to get a level 4 on board by sending a plant to the grave from your hand or face-up field. 
field. And that's going to be important because level 4s are going to be your gateway to Ricka Queen Strena. Detach a material to get back a plant monster from your grave, then tribute them away with a card like Aroma Seraphy Jasmine to summon another plant from your deck. This will, in turn, trigger Strena, summoning a rank 5 or higher plant exceeds from your extra deck or grave, which will get a material in the form of Strena. Now, this can be used to get into Alsei or Aurea if other venues are cut off, but it's most important for its ability to summon Sacred Tree Beast Hyperiton, which really should have been a Sylvan, but I digress. It acts like an invoked Mechaba, though a lot more telegraphed. You detach a material to negate and destroy your opponent's card activation, but the material you detach has to match the kind of card activated. So if it's a monster, you have to detach a monster, that kind of thing. Thankfully, it does have a way to attach non-monster cards as material, but the monster one is probably the most important, and with Strena immediately attaching itself, it'll be good to go. There's also the old mainstay, Lone Fire Blossom, letting you summon any high-level plant with no fear. From the on-theme excavation engine of Hermitry, to the off-brand targeting protection of Titanial Princess of Camellias. And the cards in our grave are easy to get a hold of thanks to Miracle Fertilizer, which interacts with Xyz summoning in the funniest way. Normally, when a monster summoned by Miracle Fertilizer leaves the field, Miracle Fertilizer has to go away. However, if you turn any of those monsters into Xyz material, it technically didn't leave the field, untethering it from Miracle Fertilizer without losing it. So it's a once per turn monster reborn that does take away your normal summon if you activate the effect, but if you have multiple copies, you can resolve more than one a turn. You can even use the same copy multiple times if you bounce it back to your hand with Araya. As for a silly tech pick, well... We do have a lot of ways to set up the top card of our deck, and if Alsei isn't on the table, how about playing with Archfiend's Oath? You pay 500 life points to call the top card of your deck, excavate it, add it to your hand if you were right, and send it to the grave if you were wrong, which does trigger the mulch effect of our Sylvans. Not high roll enough? Okay, I respect that. How about we play the true name? Same rules as Archfiend's Oath, but on top of getting to keep the card if we get it right, we can either add to hand or special summon a divine monster from our deck. This means we have the option to either slam Obelisk onto the board for a turn to obliterate our opponent, or add raw sphere mode to your hand to get rid of any particularly nasty boards. In fact, on the subject of kaijuing your opponent's monsters, remember that Aurea and Alsei can, effectively, put those monsters back into your hand or deck to be used for later while also getting them off your opponent's field. And ultimately, that's a big reason why I love Sylvans. Not the kaiju interaction per se, though it helps. They just have so many useful, niche interactions that make for fun, powerful combos. It's sad we won't ever see the days of Lone Fire into Lone Fire into Lone Fire into Hermitry, Soul Charge for three Lone Fires, turn them into three big plants, but we'd be playing in a very unfun game if Soul Charge was still legal. Maybe one day, Sylvans will get the legacy support treatment they deserve to really put them over the top, especially with the boost they got from Rikka's, to really branch out. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think Sylvans have the flower power, or are these willows making you weep a bit too much? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video around. It really does a lot to help me out. I'd also like to take this time to thank my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Cozy Boat 275 Nebula Navigators, Billy Spence, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba331, Panther J, Shep Shao Shep, The Wizard Moose, and The Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Panda PLS and Legendary Raven, as well as the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. And if you want to see another video where I talk about plants, then check out this video I did all about Rika. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye